morning, dear clinical instructor, Ms. Pilar Birch. I am Joan Tomas from the SMC Math 2 and I'll be performing the recorded written demonstration for the assessment of the donning and removing of the teeth, specifically the gloves, the bearing versus gap, the mask, of course, the eyewear. And, okay, so, uh, may I start na po? Okay, thank you, teacher. So, um, before we start, is that we have to know what is our assessment, or we have to know what is our purpose. So, for the purpose of this assessment, that is, for the patient and the staff will remain free from exposure, and of course, on the use of potential infection by the organism. Okay, so after that, we have to know what is the purpose of our equipment. So, first is the gloves. So, for, for the gloves is that, okay, so for the gloves, we have three purposes. First is to reduce, okay, so, or first is to protect our hands that are most likely to handle body substances such as the feces, the urine, the blood, sputum, and the non skin. And then right after that, uh, the second purpose of the gloves, that serves as a, or induce the likelihood in transmitting endogenous or transmitting healthcare professionals their own endogenous microorganisms from the client or to the client receiving care. And then right after that is that you have to, um, you have also to learn for the third purpose of this assessment or the third purpose of why are we using gloves that is to reduce the um, transmission or the risk or chance transmission of microorganisms from client to another, from a client to another. So first purpose for us, the second purpose is for the healthcare workers, the call workers, healthcare, healthcare professionals, and also for clients to client. Then right after that is that we have to know what is the purpose, why are we using gown? So for the gown, um, most likely uh, healthcare professionals, healthcare workers are wearing or wearing their, their gown because um, this is the time when their uniform is most likely to become torn. Then right after that is that we have to know what is the purpose, of course, of our um, face mask or our respirator. Okay, so for this one is that for the mask or the respirator is that it should be um it should cover both face of course and it reduces okay reduces the chance or risk of getting transmitted the microorganisms or the transmission of microorganisms so um by uh, so by organisms or transmitting or organisms okay so by airborne route or droplet contact and even the splatter of the body substances then our body fluids then right after that is that is that you have to um, right after that is that you have to know what is also the purpose of either or eye protective equipment including the goggles including the, uh, the glasses including the face shield then uh, so this that particular eye um, protective equipment protects us or protect our mucous membrane or protects the mucous membrane of our eyes okay so it protects the mucous membrane of our eyes and then right after knowing that of course the all the splatters that may splash or splatters on our face by body substances it can also protect them by that then right after doing those or right after knowing those is that we have to proceed on to the assessment so for the assessment it is very important and critically to know that um, for the assessment is that you have to assess for the situation in order for you to identify or determine the necessity for PPE then right after doing those is that you have to know you have to take action so you have to act and identify or to check so I'm assuming that I am checking the patient card. Okay, so I am checking the patient card. Why? For the information of the um, suspected possible or diagnosed infection of the clinical disease. Then right after that, you have also to take action. You have to determine if that certain or particular patient is exposed to blood or any body substances. 
Okay, so after doing those things, well, you have to again take action. Then you have to find or you have to determine the necessary equipment okay, regarding that patient, okay, or the necessity or the necessary equipment in order for you to prevent the exposure. Okay, so after doing those procedure or uh, after doing those assessments, then you have to proceed on the procedure. So the procedure itself is first you have to start in checking for the nursing or the medical records and the nursing person. Why this is to determine for you the type of precaution that you will be needing or that you will be needing. And that precaution is that you'll be receiving that on where on the infection control manual. Okay, so after doing those um, procedure, okay, so after that you have to plan for the activities before entering the patient's room. So for entering the patient's room also as well as um, as well as uh, uh, preparing the equipment. So you have the alcohol, okay, you have the you have the alcohol, okay, you have the mask, okay, you have the respirator mask, you have the course, the gloves, okay, the eyewear, the glasses, then the impervious gown, okay. So after doing, after doing those, after doing those um, prepare preparation, then after that you have to, of course, provide instructions that in, that is included in your nursing care plan. It's also of your part of your health teaching, health educating on the patient, on the family members, and on the visitor. Okay, so right after that, you have to proceed on the procedure that is, or that involves a hand hygiene. So you have to perform hand hygiene. So I have a full video regarding a complete hand video, so I just sent it. So I hope you watch it. Okay, so I'll just do the shortcut of it, but I'll just I am doing the proper method of doing hand washing because this is according to the standard of World Health Organization. Okay, so that's it. So after performing hand hygiene, so this is the time when we are donning our personal protective equipment. First, you have to don the gown. So let's get the gown here. Okay. So in donning the gown, okay, so I will state first the rationale so that this this gown prevents the cross contamination between the soils and skin area. Okay. Okay, so pick up a clean gown. I just pick up a clean gown, okay, then fold it away to your body. Okay, fold it away to your body and then let it unfold, okay? Not not letting it to touch any soil, okay? Not letting it to touch any soil or area that is soil, okay? So without allowing it, okay, in other terms. And right after that, you have to unfold it like this, okay? Fold and fold and fold. Then you have to slide your arms and your hands to the sleeves. Just like this. And then and then after that you have to fasten. You have to fasten the ties on the neck. If there is any, and then, okay, so you have to fasten the ties on the neck, securing the gown into a proper place, okay. To secure the gown into a proper place, and then right after doing this, is that you have to overlap, okay, 
have overlap the back okay, as much as possible and then when you see that it is overlapped enough okay, you have to tie okay. so you have to tie for the you have to tie for the back. Then right after doing this assessment or doing this procedure is that um, of course you are going to um, you, you are going to wear your after donning this gown of course you have to you have to wear your um, you have to wear your eye uh, wearing eyewear and face mask. So first is the face mask. So, so this is our face mask. This is N95. Then after, um, before doing this, is that um, you have to think to, to locate the you have to locate the top edge. Okay. So for the top edge, it it has a um, what we call this. It has a like this a narrow strip on it. So we most mask is really have a narrow strip on it. Then after that you have to hold the mask what how and yeah that that's it. You have to hold the mask into a um into the top of the two loops or the strings. And if your mask can have a loop so you have to hold on the top of the loops or above the loops. Then then doing this, okay, so so uh, I think I'm inaudible or inaudible so so just like this and then you have to um, uh, after that you have to place the mask or place the edge of the mask over okay, over the bridge of your nose okay this is the bridge of my nose then you have to just pinch it like that and then right after that you have to locate the edge right you have to um, put the upper edge okay, and locate and then put it on the bridge and then of course grab the upper ties and put it on the back of the head and then okay so and then after that the back ties okay on the back of the neck and then if you are using a face mask with loops so secure the loops around your ears okay so right after doing this is that um it's very important for you to know if glasses were worn okay put the glasses okay put the glasses um so put uh put the Put the mask, okay, under the bridge or up under the edge of the glasses, okay, or under the glasses to make it secure, okay. Then, after doing this, is that we'll have now to proceed on wearing our gloves, okay. So, the donning of the gloves. So, in donning the gloves is that you have first, okay, so you have first to, um, you have first to open, okay, you have to open the, okay, you have to open this, you have to open the, um, package, you have to open the package on the upper edge, you grasp the upper edge of the package. So assuming that this like this and this is our glove and down in our glove grasp okay so first is I open it use okay so first use your dominant hand okay use your dominant hand to um put the non-dominant hand in the glove and slide it over Okay, slide 
is the non-dominant over inside the glove, of course, and keeping keeping the keeping the paw, uh, keeping the folded paw, okay, keeping the folded paw or leaving the folded paw inside out. Then, and after that, this is uh, the using your glove hand or your non-dominant hand. Then take the glove and put it on the dominant hand of the ungloved hand. Okay, so and then slide it over. Repeat the same process. So slide it over the folded cuff. Okay. Slide it over the folded cuff and let your non-dominant hand slide to the inside of the glove like this then right after that is that so so after doing those secure your fingers on the gloves okay so after you sec uh, secure your fingers on on the gloves and uh, of course if it is properly placed so it should be properly placed and to um, avoid the risk of transmitting microorganisms so you should pull pull the edge of the pull the edge or end of the gloves to cover the cuff. If I am wearing gown, if I'm wearing gown, you should pull the edge of the gloves, okay? Just like this to cover the cuff. If I am not wearing a gown, then you should pull again, pull the edge of your mask or of your gloves. Okay, to cover your wrists. Okay, so okay, I'll just after doing that, we will now be proceeding on what we call. Uh, okay, so we will be now proceeding on what we call the um. Of course, after we set everything right, we will be now removing our personal protective equipment. Okay, so the first thing that you will that you should know upon the removing of PPE is that the PPE, of course, is uh, the removal of PPE removes the PPE outside the patient's room, of course, and remove everything except for the mask or respirator. Leave it just like this. Then, then after that, you have to remove that. But remove everything except for the respirator or mask. Then, for um, of course you have to remove the PPE on the doorway or the ante room or outside the patient's room. Why? So rationalize this one. Rationalize this one. This is of course to um. This is of course for you to be able to um the the proper removal of the PPE ensures, of course, the prevention of the transmission of microorganisms. And then, of course, you have to take note that um, in the removing the improper removal of the PPE, of course, when uh, the the gun is tied, of course, um, the the front of the gown, everything that is in front of the gown and in the sleeve are contaminated and then of course the inside of the gown and the um, outside back, the head and the back are clean. Why? Because these areas are most likely to be uh, clean and these PPE areas are most likely to have are not likely or um, unlikely to be contaminated with the microorganism or infectious microorganisms. So that's why they are clean. Then, the, of course, the front of the gown, the waist ties, or if the, uh, no, if, if the waist ties are tied in front, then it is contaminated. It is considered contaminated. The proper disposal of this was um, a was a proper disposal of gown, of course, 
prevents the transmission of infection or microorganism. And then, right after doing those, is that you have to um, the the when the the ground side, of course, in front. Uh, it is important for us to know or to remember that it is contaminated, including front of the gown and the ties of the gown that is tied in front, the strings and the waist ties. Then, of course, then you have to, in order for that, you have to untie that before you remove your gloves. So, so, so let's proceed on to the second procedure. So for the time procedure, in removing the glove, or in removing the gown, if the gown, okay, if the gown are tied, okay, so if the gown are tied in front, then on the waistline, at the waist, in the waistline, the waist strings, you should remove the waist strings, or you should untie the waist, the waist strings, and before removing your glove, then this after that is that we have to remove our gloves. So, how do we do it? You have to first remove, okay, grasp, okay, grasp the um, edge of the glove, okay, and let it and peel it off. As you peel it off, you have. So make sure that it is inside and out. Okay? So as you pull it off. So hold the on, okay? So hold the unglove or you hold the remove glove. Okay? Hold the remove glove and then hold by the glove hand. So to rationalize this one, this should not so the unglove hand should not touch any contaminated surface at all. Okay? So this Hold this, hold the glove, hold the remove glove with your glove hand. And then slide your fingers carefully, not touching the outer surface. Slide your fingers here and then peel it off. Okay, peel it off. The, the first glove should contain the one glove. Okay, just like this. The lip off and then put it immediately or discard it immediately in the appropriate waste container. Then, after doing that, you have to perform hand hygiene. Then right after doing this is that you should always remember to after uh, removing the gloves is that you should um, like this, okay? You should follow this one to remove. So you have to remove the glasses, okay? So in uh, you should remove it by headband or earpieces to remove the hand or the glasses or the eye protective equipment or the face shield goggles. You have to remove it by headband, lifting away from your body or your face. Then, um, um, disposing it or putting it into a designated receptacle for reprocessing. And if or if not, it is it should be put it into a appropriate waste container. Okay. that and then after doing this is that you should be able to after you move it you should be able to rationalize that one so in rationalization of removing glasses so that the proper removal of course um it is vital for us because it it prevents the transmission of infections or microorganisms and then for this one is that and pop to rem and or everything of course that is outside of our face shield our goggles our eye protective equipment is considered as contaminated always remember that 
then um, whenever we do this okay whenever we do this is that um, we should always remember in handling them by husband by your pieces okay is um, and lifting away from our face is what makes them uh, help in preventing the transmission of uh, microorganisms and then right after doing those is the the proper disposal so as i have said earlier is also a way of trans of prevention of transmission of microorganisms okay so right after doing those is that we have now to uh, we have now to proceed on removing of our gown okay so in removing our gown is that we have to unfasten the tie on the back neck and the back the neck first So it should be like this and then you should be able to just like that. And then after after that is that um you have to line up or um allow okay. So allow your um to slide off, allow your sleeve or your the gown to slide off from your from your uh, or curl shoulder, okay? Not touching any surface or the outer surface, but on the inner surface, and then of course pulling it away from your torso, and then of course um, keeping it away. So keeping it away from you, of course, and then from your arm, pull it away from your arm and then of course touching only the inside of our gown and then pull it away touching the inner surface only and then hold it or roll it into a bundle okay and then discard it immediately okay So discard it, dispose it to a uh, uh, appropriate waste container. Okay. So assuming that this is the one. After doing so, is that we have to. So uh, there's a limitation for that one. Is that the removal or the proper removal so everything so that is to prevent the transmission of infection and of course everything that is outside on us everything that is outside on the gown in front of the gown of course in front of the gown is considered automatic including the sleeves and the waist tight or waist uh, chain then of course the handling of the handling and uh, the handling, the handling, and by headband and earpieces are ways to prevent the spread of microorganisms, of course. And then the proper disposal is helps to prevent the spread of microorganisms, of course. And also by lifting on our faces, okay, lifting it away from our faces is the spread is a prevention of microorganisms and. Of course, the proper disposal as well. Okay, so just like that. So we have to proceed on to the mask. So I'll be um, stating on my rationale for this uh, in removal the mask. So we are doing this because we wanted. So of course, so everything that is in front of the mask is considered as contaminated. Then we will be doing this by grasping our our um, upper thighs and back thighs in outside so outside are, are in front so um, not touching or not allowing the uh, not touching or not allowing your hands to touch in front of the mask is a way of prevention of 
transmission of microorganisms. Okay? Then, the proper disposal of the mask also has a vital role in prevention of microorganisms or prevention of transmission of microorganisms. Okay? We should first just remove the respiratory or mask. We should start for the back thighs. Okay? And the upper thighs. Okay? Not touching. Okay? So carefully not touching the the front of the mask okay the front of the mask and the post the respiratory mask of course let's remove it then dispose the respiratory mask into a appropriate waste container then there we have it so of course in doing so you have to be very very careful in doing that so after you do that is that of course you have to you have to after removing everything you have to you, you, after you remove all your PPE immediately of course immediately you have to perform and wash. Okay, so there you have it. So thank you very much to our clinical instructor, Mr. George H. I am Shanta Masige. From this end to the shoe, and I hope you like my video. Thank you very much.